straightforward to interpret and to compare. So the administration forecasts growth of 3% in 2010, followed by growth of 4.3% in both uh, 2011 and 2012. Now our estimate of growth in 2010 is virtually identical to the consensus of private forecasters surveyed by the blue chip uh, economic indicators and is right smack in the middle of the central tendency of the Federal Reserve's uh, Federal Open Market Committee forecast that was released uh, back in November. Our medium term forecasts are also within the range of the other forecasts, but I think here uh, it's true there's substantial variation across the different, different forecasts. Now, as actually is shown in chart 2.5 of the analytical perspectives volume, our average annual GDP growth projection for the five years uh, after the GDP trough is 3.8%, similar to the 4.2% historical average uh, during recoveries. Now, the forecast that the Congressional Budget Office released last week was considerably more pessimistic about both 2010 and 2011 than either the administration forecast uh, or the blue chip consensus. And actually, as CBO noted in its release, they're required to make forecasts under the assumption that none of the Recovery Act provisions uh, are extended, there's no new jobs bill enacted, and all of the 2001 and 2003 tax cuts expire at the end of the year. CBO's report was careful to explain that under the assumption that some of these policies will be extended, uh, its forecast would have looked much more similar uh, to other forecasts. All right, well, for the unemployment rate, the administration projects that we will end uh, 2010 with an unemployment rate at approximately 9.8%. By the fourth quarter of 2011, it's projected to be 8.9%, and by the fourth quarter of 2012, 7.9%. These estimates are again in the range of other forecasts, both for the short uh, and the medium run. Now, our projections of the unemployment rate reflect the particularly severe toll that this recession has taken on the labor market and on American workers. To counteract the painfully high rate of unemployment and to accelerate the recovery of the labor market, the President has called for a number of targeted actions to jumpstart private sector job creation. And among these is the Small Business Jobs and Wage Tax Credit that he announced uh, just last week. Finally, let me say a word about the inflation rate, where here I'm going to focus on uh, it measured using the GDP price index. We project that inflation will be 1% over the four quarters of 2010, 1.4% over 2011, and 1.7% over 2012. I'd say that these projections are lower than those of some forecasters and higher than others. The low levels of projected inflation reflect the effects of continued high levels of uh, slack in the economy. Under these conditions, we see little risk of noticeably increased inflation. At the same time, inflationary expectations appear to be quite well anchored. And so we do not project rapid declines in inflation or deflation. The administration anticipates that the inflation rate will level off at about 1.8 percent, square, squarely within the Federal Reserve's long-run projection range of 1.7 uh, to 2 percent. Well, there's certainly no question that the past year has been an incredibly difficult one for the American economy and for the American people. Because of the actions taken over the past year, the trajectory of the economy is greatly improved. As Peter mentioned, real GDP expanded strongly in the fourth quarter of 2009 and shows every sign of continuing to grow steadily. However, as our forecast makes clear, the path back to full employment will take time and continued vigilance. The President is committed to taking every responsible action to accelerate job creation and speed recovery. Thanks. Okay, I think uh, we will now open it up to questions. There are wireless microphones for folks asking questions, and I see lots of hands up over here, so why don't we start right there. 17th, 
So Abs did, yes. So did those inc that didn't include the fourth quarter, the 5.7 number that we got on Friday? Absolutely not. Okay, and then you, th is that when you decided that you would have 100 billion in stimulus funds that are job funds, excuse me, my mistake, I don't know why anyone would make that mistake. Um, 100 billion, that is driving your forecasts for your 3% growth or not? You're not getting towards the house's version of 154 billion or is, is what's the placeholder there? So Peter can certainly, the placeholder in I'll the, do the placeholder. you want to do the placeholder? But, but it, uh, just to answer the question about locking down. So yes, we certainly locked it down before we got the, the fourth quarter GDP number. I think, so I think if that's the question, yeah. And then quickly on the placeholder, uh, we have $100 billion uh, in a jobs package that includes uh, $33 billion or so for the new jobs uh, and wages tax credit that the President talked about to spur small business hiring and, uh, expand and increases in wages. Uh, and, and there will be other components forthcoming. So that placeholder did influence the modeling that Dr. Romer has? We anticipated that there would be some additional job activity in doing the economic assumptions, and it yes. And it, it wouldn't vary it that much whether or not that number is $100 billion or $154 billion or close to the Senate's version? Well, I also think you're comparing, just let me answer the question more directly. The House had $155 billion. That's not completely apples to apples with regard to our $100 billion placeholder. So be careful about jumping to conclusions about relative magnitude there. But we do, but the, the assumption that you guys have does include additional jobs money in the range of $100 billion. Yes. yes. Uh, does, does any, do any of the projections in the budget, either for 2011 or in the outlying years, assume that since you locked this down on the 17th, assume that some version of health care reform or even incremental health care reform such as IT would be uh, signed into law? Yeah, we took a very simple approach in which uh, since both the House and Senate had uh, passed legislation, we took the average of the two. And you'll see in uh, the tables the net deficit impact uh, from taking the average of the House and Senate legislation. So I, I would note, for example, uh, that's just slightly north over 10 years of $100 billion in deficit reduction. So it's a very small share of the more than $1.2 trillion in deficit reduction that's contained in the budget. And I further note that $1.2 trillion does not include uh, the impact of winding down the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. If you included that, you're well north of $2 trillion in deficit reduction. Thank you. Jeff Mason from Reuters. My question is for Dr. Romer. Pardon me, I've got a cold. Um, can you explain a little bit about what's driving your optimism on GDP? You seem to be a little bit further than consensus uh, on GDP, but in line with consensus on, on unemployment. Um, oh, that's a great idea. Uh, so, are we on? Yes. Uh, so I think the first thing to say is, uh, as you point out, we're smack equal to the consensus in 2010. For 2011, we're, again, within the range, say, that the FOMC put out in their November forecast. We are a little bit higher uh, than the consensus. You know, I think, you know, I think I do want to come back to uh, historical experience, because certainly one of the things that, that I mentioned is coming out of past recessions, average growth in the five years after the GDP trough has been some 4.2 percent. Uh, we are actually over that same five-year period. Uh, our forecast has 3.8 percent, so we're certainly being, you know, I think very true to history of anything airing on uh, slightly below the, the historical average. So, you know, we think, you know, based on uh, what we're doing, the policies in place, what we see happening, we think it's, it's a reasonable, honest forecast. I remember last year, I think in this same room, you, you gave a, a forecast on unemployment that was a little bit more optimistic than some others were saying, and you indicated then that you had information or data that others weren't looking at. Does, are you, do you have data or information that is driving your GDP forecast that others aren't looking at? So certainly let me talk some about last year. Uh, certainly last year one of the things I was talking very much about is um, that we certainly had, we thought, better assumptions about what the policies that we would put in place uh, would be. Uh, I think the first thing to do is to acknowledge that like many forecasters, certainly our unemployment forecast for last year was lower than uh, as I've turned out to be. Uh, and that certainly I think reflects in large part just how, as I mentioned before, how severe this recession has been on the labor market in particular. And I'll, I'll say, you know, one of the things that is, is also true, 
the behavior of unemployment has been unusual given the behavior of GDP. The last thing I actually, I just have to, I can't help since we've been pulling the numbers on this. Uh, when we got the uh, fourth quarter number for GDP, we now know what actual GDP change was from the end of 2008 to the end of 2009. Uh, it was uh, 0.1, one tenth of a percent. Last year we had, uh, our forecast was for it to grow three tenths of a percent. So we in fact were on the GDP forecast, I think we're